When using the standard curve method, the quantity of each experimental sample is first determined using a standard curve and is then expressed relative to a calibrator sample. In this video, we will show you step by step how to prepare a pooled cDNA sample to generate a standard curve. Establishing a standard curve for quantitation. Calculate the correlation coefficient and amplification efficiency from standard curve. And estimate the relative quantity of cDNA in an unknown sample. To generate the standard curve, we first need to prepare four samples consist of a three-fold serial dilution of cDNA template known to express the gene of interest in high abundance, as a calibrator sample. If you do not have a cDNA template that has high expression of the gene of interest, you can generate the calibrator by pooling the cDNA from your unknown sample. Next, set up PCR reaction for each serial dilution. Enter the arbitrary starting quantity as 27, 9, 3 and 1, or other starting quantity based on the dilution factor. Finally, run the PCR and determine their threshold cycle values. Once the qPCR is completed, we can export the data file and open it under Excel. Here, you can see the target that is being amplified. It is a good practice to include the code for each primer pair if there are more than one pair of primer being used for a target gene. You also see the CQ which represent the threshold cycle determined by the machine, and SQ representing the starting quantity which was key and based on our dilution factor. Note that the log SQ is also automatically calculated here. To generate the standard curve, we plot the CQ versus log SQ value. We will include a trend line, equation and R-square here. The R-square represent the correlation coefficient and should normally more than 0.95 and above. The slope of standard curve indicates PCR efficiency. You can use the formula as shown here to calculate the PCR efficiency. The efficiency of the PCR should be between 90 to 110%. If the efficiency is 100%, the CQ values of the 10-fold dilution will be 3.3 cycles apart, that is a two-fold change for each change in CQ. If the slope is below 3.6, then the PCR has poor efficiency. Several parameters can affect the efficiency of the PCR. For example, the standard curve may not have been properly analyzed or has outlier, inaccurate sample and reagent pipetting. Your PCR primer or probe design may not be optimal. Or your samples may contain PCR inhibitors. We will discuss this in detail in a separate video. Next, we will use the standard curve generated to calculate the relative abundance of our target genes from our unknown samples. Here, we have six samples from six genetic engineered cell lines derived from the MCF10A non transformed myoepithelial cells. We have two group of cells. One group expressed an empty lentiviral vector, PLKO, and another group has stable expression of AP53 shRNA targeting the 3' UTR of the endogenous P53. These cells were then overipexpressed with exogenous P53 mutants, such as R273H mutants and R275H mutants. The objective of the experiment is to evaluate the effects of P53 mutants on MIR-141, MIR 200A and MIR 419 expression. RNU6 was used as a housekeeping control for micro RNA detection. Each sample was ran with duplicate. To calculate the relative abundance of the micro RNA expression, we will take the CQ value for each sample and plug it into the formula we generated from the standard curve. In the standard curve, Y represent the log starting quantity or SQ, X represent the CQ value. To convert the CQ to the starting quantity, we will calculate the X value and then transform the value with antilog. Once you get the SQ value, you can calculate the mean and standard deviation. In general, the CQ for each replicate shouldn't be more than 0.5. We will do this for the RNU6 first as it is our housekeeping gene. Next, we will do the same for the target genes that we are interested. We will first convert the CQ to SQ. Then, we will normalize the SQ against the SQ of the RNU6, which is our housekeeping gene. 
This will help us to correct the variations in the concentration of the cDNA template which might occur during our cDNA conversion and dilution despite using the same amount of microRNA input for our reaction. After the SQ of our target genes are normalized against the housekeeping gene, we can start calculating the relative fold change caused by our treatment. Here, we will normalize the normalized SQ against the vector control cells, so that the expression of the vector control cells will be arbitrary set as 1. If our treatment increases the expression of the target gene, the fold change will be more than 1. If the gene is down-regulated, the fold change will be less than 1. You can calculate the mean fold change and the standard deviations accordingly and plot it in a bar chart and determine the statistical significance by student's t-test accordingly. In our results here, it seems that p53 or 273h overexpression induces both MIR-141, MIR-200A and MIR-429 in MCF10A cells in the present or absence of endogenous wild-type p53. In contrast, no such induction was observed in cells overexpressing p53 or 175h. In conclusion, the results suggest that P53 or 273H is a positive regulator of MIR-141, MIR-200A and MIR-429 in MCF-10A cells.